I've arrived to Sydney myself just yesterday, and so it's nice to say welcome to everybody here. Um, I would like to start from saying thank you to our host, uh, first of all, Professor Halina, um, and uh, also uh, Ben Angleton, uh, Chris Walsh, um, Shelley, who will be uh, speaking after me, and will give you a brief uh, um, information about uh, what uh, uh, we have around here, uh, uh, and um, how things will happen uh, during those next uh, several days uh, here in Sydney during the first uh, week of the ICOM Summer School. So uh, I hope all of you had a chance to see uh, the logo of uh, our ICOM Summer School. Um, it's interesting when uh, Halina says uh, Australia is a little small country because uh, uh, it's the only country, as we know, of, uh, that occupies the entire continent. Um, and uh, our Intercontinental Advanced Materials for Photonic Summer School is a school which is traveling between different continents, right? So we wouldn't be able to miss Australia, right? Because that's a country occupying the entire continent. In the other continents, we could have a choice, right? But in Australia, uh, this is the place to have the summer school. Uh, and um, uh, we could see from the overview given by Halina that uh, there's really strong research going on in Australia in optics, photonics, and also in material science. Um, and um, uh, so it's a pleasure and honor for us to have uh, the summer school here in Australia. Uh, so, as you know, the, the school will take place uh, uh, both in Sydney and in Brisbane and uh, we'll have a lot of lectures in the next uh, three weeks. Um, and uh, the main idea of the summer school is to combine the advanced education in materials and photonics at the interface of photonics, optics and material science with uh, learning about history, and culture of uh, different countries around the world and uh, uh, we are very eager to learn more about Australia. So uh, although we, uh, uh, we uh, know uh, what abbreviation the ICAM stands for, it's Intercontinental Advanced Materials for Photonics so, uh, School, summer or winter depending on where we are around the world. Uh, uh, this time it's a uh, winter school. Um, uh, but uh, we also want to think about this school as an informal, cool, adventurous meeting of professionals. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, we have this kind of experience from this meeting during the next three weeks. Um, uh, and uh, although you might be familiar with many different summer schools, um, for example, in University of Colorado at Boulder, we have two other summer schools. Um, one is in condensed matter physics, the other one is in high energy physics. They take place every year in the same location in Boulder. Um, iCamp is different, it's traveling around the world, right? And so gives us a chance to see different countries uh, and uh, learn culture and history of those countries and those nations uh, at the same time, in addition to learning photonics and, uh, um, you know, the new advances in research. Um, and so, to my knowledge, that's actually the only summer school of this kind that's uh, traveling so much. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, this is the web page with which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. There is a lot of information, including Google Maps, uh, with the locations of different places um, that we will need to deal with during the first week, and also the following two weeks in Brisbane. Um, and uh, in here you will also be able to see, for example, a roster of participants where you could find other students, their contact information, and uh, hopefully you can stay in touch even after the summer school um, or winter school. I 
have a hard time to. <laughs> um, so um, um, there is also a general web page of the ICOM school, and it has uh, two different parallel locations. One is uh, um, on the page of International Institute for Complex Adaptive Matter. Um, and uh, from there you can find links to, for example, the previous ICOM that was held in China and to this one, and then there will be a lot more, and uh, some other general information. The other web page is also, you know, a parallel web page is located uh, uh, at university, on the pages of University of Colorado. Uh, <coughs> this is the web page of the uh, workshop that we'll have during the second week of the ICOM Summer School in Brisbane, uh, and I hope that many of you had a chance to visit uh, this web page too. So there is a program, scientific program of the workshop with a lot of lectures on organic photovoltaics uh, and uh, um, all of those lectures of the workshop are also part of the ICAM summer school. Right? So um, because uh, renewable energy is a focus of research in many countries and also here in Australia as you could see from Helena's presentation um, we have this uh, focus topic of the workshop for three days out of three weeks. We will talk, we will hear lectures mostly about uh, one area of research which will be in uh, um, the uh, organic photovoltaics. And uh, um, for those, many of you uh, have had a chance to participate in the previous ICOM school in China. Um, back then we had it in four different cities in China, uh, Hangzhou, Shanghai, Beijing, um, and Qingdao, um, and uh, also had a lot of interesting lectures and uh, interesting fun activities. Uh, and so just to give you an idea what we are looking after based on the example of the previous item summer school, I want to show you those pictures where you can see we did not only just sit in the lecture rooms, uh, although there was a lot of that, um, but uh, we also had uh, a lot of tours, uh, for example, to Great Wall, to the Olympic Center, um, and uh, we had a lot of fun activities such as learning Chinese calligraphy, uh, of course, there was not enough to learn everything about it, <laughs> but uh, at least we have some ideas. Um, and uh, uh, there were dancing lessons, as you could see from here, poster sessions, of course, tours, and so on and so on. So you can see um, iCamp is combining advanced education in photonics and material science with fun activities, right, so you shouldn't be bored, you know, if you would just listen lectures for three weeks straight, right, that would be tough. But if you combine and mix uh, them with, uh, you know, some fun, uh, you know, then it's uh, doable and, you know, you can learn um, a lot about what's going on in research in, in material science and photonics in parallel with learning about the country, in this case Australia, about uh, the uh, history and traditions. Um, and so this is what we are looking forward to. Um, the main sponsor of the ICOM Summer School is uh, International Institute for Complex Adaptive Matter. This is the logo of this institute. Uh, and uh, ICOM is uh, uh, an um, international materials institute supported by the National Science Foundation. You see the logo of National Science Foundation in here, of United States of America. Um, so there are just several international materials institutes supported by the National Science Foundation. Uh, ICAMP is one of them, but it's also the biggest one right, in the United States of America. And uh, it's an uh, international materials institute, so that means uh, uh, this funding program of the NSF is promoting international collaborators, uh, cooperation. So 
a lot of visits from United States to different countries around the world are supported by uh, this institute. Um, and um, um, you can also see in here on this Google map different branches around the world uh, where there are local uh, branches or sections of this International Materials Institute established, right? And so you can see there is one in the University of Queensland. And we hope that after we have a summer school, they will be interested in establishing more of those institutes um, in uh, Australia because, uh, uh, you know, there could be funding to support collaborations and visits, exchange visits, more workshops, more summer schools that would involve Australia and United States and also other countries around the world. Um, <clears throat> now, the, in terms of funding, uh, so the, the $40,000 are coming from the ICAM, I2CAM, International Institute for Complex Adaptive Matter, which are mostly used to support uh, participation of the speakers and students of ICAM. Uh, the uh, $20,000 uh, are, in, in addition, coming from the same institute for the support of the um, organic photovoltaics workshop, the three-day workshop, right, the CMOPV workshop, which stands for Complex Interactions um, and Mechanisms in Organic Photovoltaics, right? Um, and so, because during those three days we'll have a lot more speakers coming to give lectures, um, the, uh, you know, for, um, we, we have a bit more support for that. And then uh, uh, we also have uh, the best paper awards provided by the International Society for uh, Optical Engin Engineering, SPIE. Um, and uh, for those of you who will present posters, uh, you will automatically be considered for those uh, best paper awards. Um, as you remember, we'll have three poster sessions, one here in Sydney and then two in Brisbane. Um, and so for the best presentations for each session will be awarded uh, $200 uh, each. And uh, uh, we will have the invited speakers and local organizers um, um, basically ranking the, those presentations, right? So many people will be involved in ranking those poster presentations and then the results will be added together and will this way determine uh, which presentation is worth of giving this best paper award. And we have also a lot of support from the local organizing institutions, you know, you, uh, could see from Helena's presentation, uh, you know, the different centers that are involved. You can also see the logos of those organizations in here, most notably Kudos, uh, supporting this our first week uh, here in Sydney, um, and also University of Queensland, Australian Optical Society, um, COPE, uh, you know, supporting mostly the uh, workshop in um, Brisbane. So now a little bit of general information uh, for you. Um, so we'll have a huge number of lectures. Um, I counted 45 minute lectures uh, and uh, we have 140, about 140 of those in the course of three weeks, right? It's a lot. So that's why I'm saying it's important to combine with some fun because otherwise it's just too much. Uh, would be too much. Uh, now, uh, these 140 lectures involve scientific presentations uh, and also uh, we'll have some outreach and some, um, um, some uh, career development lectures which uh, you will see will be helpful um, you know, in many ways to develop your own scientific careers and you, uh, um, we hope you will find them useful. Um, so we will have a workshop, we'll have two mini workshops, which will be one day mini workshops, uh, and uh, we will have uh, intercontinental telebridge, that's when uh, 
will have uh, um, panel members in different parts of the world and uh, will discuss what has to be done um, in order to um, you know, save our Earth from this energy standpoint, right? how to find you know, the right sources for energy so that uh, it's sustainable. Uh, and um, um, then uh, we'll have other panels, we'll have webinar lectures, uh, we'll have, uh, um, in terms of participants, we have uh, many invited speakers, we also have special event speakers, for example, uh, the co-director of the International Institute for Complex Adaptive Matter, um, uh, Daniel Cox, will give a, an overview lecture about the ICAM during the second week of the school. Um, we also have uh, uh, many students involved in uh, organizing this event too, right? so they're kind of self-organizing. Uh, you know, we like self-organization in material science, you know, when things happen by themselves. And so it's good to have active students who help with organizing some activities here in Brisbane, and all, or here in Sydney and also in Brisbane. And for example, the barbecue party uh, tomorrow, you know, will be uh, greatly helped by uh, students who, who will help with organizing it. Uh, and. Um, uh, so we have uh, in total, uh, based on what I counted from the web registration, 78 on-site student participants uh, here in Sydney and in Brisbane. And so some are coming to uh, Brisbane um, uh, and uh, some are staying on the, in Sydney, uh, but total is 78. Actually, in Brisbane, we'll have more students because um, for international students, um, it was for us a bit challenging to provide a lodging here in Sydney because it's finals week. Uh, and so all the students of University of Sydney are still around and we couldn't find you know, inexpensive lodging that we could support. But in Sydney, we uh, provide lodging for many international students and uh, so that way many students from other countries could join many more students from other countries could join us in Sydney, in Brisbane than in Sydney um, so the room will be a lot more full of students I guess in, in Brisbane um, and then uh, we also have 109 registered remote participants so it doesn't mean all of them will uh, you know, watch each individual lecture. I guess some of them will, you know, uh, combine it with watching soccer cup, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, quite a few of them registered and I hope they will take advantage of the wonderful lectures we'll have here. And the roster of participants with all information, contact information is available here. So, as I already mentioned it, um, what do we expect during the three weeks of the ICAM? We'll have lectures, poster sessions, real-time webcast, and uh, you see those cameras in here, that's what they are for. Um, the lectures will also be archived for viewing at a later time. Uh, we'll also have a career development forum um, and uh, you know, I'll mention what is that in just a couple minutes. Um, we'll have, we, we do have participation fellowships, so uh, we provide support to many students, and many of you uh, are supported by those. Um, uh, so uh, we'll have a lot of, of tourism and uh, many tours, um, and uh, we'll have informal receptions, fun, we'll have, uh, uh, what best poster presentations and so on. A couple uh, minutes I want to spend to mention uh, the webcast and uh, web archiving uh, that we are doing. Um, so uh, uh, the web coordinators, uh, the webcast coordinators are uh, Rahul Chivedi here and uh, Dr. Tevu Lee. 
Um, and um, uh, so all the lectures that we'll have during those three weeks uh, will be uh, viewed by participants from the around the world uh, in real time. So they will see something like this, a speaker, you know, giving a lecture, uh, they will hear the sound, or they will see the video, and next to the video there will be a PowerPoint uh, which is synchronized with uh, the lecture, right? And so they will be also able to manually go along the slide at a different speed if they want to. Um, so this is actually an example of uh, the uh, video archived lecture from two years ago um, when we had uh, an event like this in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, and so, uh, so how this will happen? So uh, Dr. Lee and uh, uh, Rahul Trivedi uh, will uh, collect the uh, PDF or PowerPoint slides uh, of all presentations um, and then uh, uh, they will upload those to the web page so that uh, whoever will be viewing the uh, lectures in real time through webcast will be able to see those um, and uh, you can see two camcorders in here one of them is used for uh, webcast in real time the other one has a, a hard drive connected to it and it's compressing all the videos uh, in real time um, uh, so that they later can be used for uh, the archive of the lectures. And so the, we hope that um, all the videos will be uploaded to the web page very soon after the uh, lectures are given so that those students around the world who are not in the right time zone to watch, you know, the lectures or if you know if they happen to watch soccer uh, games at the same time they don't want to you know uh, watch on the two screens at the same time the two um, so they can uh, watch the uh, archive lecture you know soon there after it happened and also all the uh, webcast participants can ask questions um, so once they ask a question Rahul uh, or Tebu will see it, and uh, uh, in the end of presentation, uh, they will uh, uh, help to deliver this question to the speaker. And uh, uh, the web webcast viewing instructions are on the web page. So for those students who, for example, wouldn't be able to go to Brisbane for the second and third week, they still could, you know. Uh, participate remotely and uh, Helena spent some time uh, discussing mentioning the topics scientific topics for the three weeks of ICOM summer school um, you already saw those the workshop and also the uh, the three different topics of the ICOM school so what I will just mention briefly so that we have a couple of minutes for coffee uh, you know, before the first lecture of the summer school, is that in addition to the scientific lectures, we'll also have uh, some um, short lectures and also uh, informal discussions about global aspects of outreach, right? So, in many countries around the world, um, we want to um, convey the scientific knowledge not only to other scientists, which we usually do at conferences and workshops and summer schools, but also to general public. And that's often more challenging because, you know, they don't know all the terminology that we scientists use, right? And uh, uh, in different countries around the world, we have some experience and some success in doing this, uh, but um, uh, Rarely we do exchange knowledge how to do it, right? And so we'll have some uh, of this kind of exchange here at the ICAM school. Uh, and also we'll have the career development program, uh, which is designed to help uh, students and postdocs 
in finding jobs in academia, industry, national labs, in uh, preparing for those uh, job applications, you know, and so all of those topics will be also discussed here at the ICANN School. Well, as I mentioned, uh, uh, it's not only about science because uh, we all look forward to, uh, you know, learning about Australia and uh, sightseeing. Uh, we all know about famous Australian barbecue. It's time to try. <laughs> um, and, uh, um, you know, we, we also want to learn about and, and see all the uh, very interesting animals that, uh, you know, we learn in schools in different countries, but never have a chance to see them, you know, uh, and uh, the zoos and wild animals uh, here in Australia is uh, uh, are also of great interest for us. Um, so, uh, uh, incidentally, the uh, summer school is coinciding with uh, the football World Cup. Uh, and, uh, I know you, many of you are coming from the countries where uh, football or soccer is the number one game. Um, and uh, uh, so we hope to have chances to watch some of those games, you know, maybe discuss, maybe we'll be doing some game forecasts, you know, mm -hmm. play some games. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, uh, and uh, at that moment, uh, uh, I would like to uh, ask Shelley to uh, say several words um, about, a little bit about University of Sydney and all the arrangements uh, that we have in here uh, and so and I also want to thank her and uh, all the local organizers um, for hosting uh, the first week of ICAM here in Sydney. Thank you. Shelley Martin and I'm the administrator in Kudos, which you've now heard that probably said about a hundred times. But Kudos is actually located in the School of Physics and the School of Physics is located in the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Science is located in this university. So I would like to welcome you to the University of Sydney. Uh, it's the oldest and probably the most prestigious university in Australia and was founded in 1850. So if you get an opportunity to walk around the campus, you'll see some of the fabulous architecture that goes back to that period, and also some uh, award-winning buildings that have been built um, recently. So it's a very interesting campus to, to have a walk around. Uh, I'm, I'll make this brief. I just want to go through a couple of housekeeping matters with you. We're in uh, Lecture Room 424 in the Education Building. So all of your sessions will be held in this room with the exception of the lab tour on Thursday morning and the poster session on Friday evening, which wraps up your week here, and that will be held over in the physics building. Uh, the careers forum that's on this evening, there's a change of venue to that. It was going to be in the School of Physics, but it's going to be here. So when you finish tonight around five o'clock, be what, a half an hour break, and then reconvene here for that, for that careers forum. Um, the toilets are located um, at the end of the mezzanine area here and there's also some vending machines, uh, drinks and snacks near the toilets. We will be serving morning and afternoon tea in the area where you registered um, and we'll be going for a break shortly. Rather than sort of giving you boring rolls and sandwiches for lunch, we thought we'd uh, allow you to use your lunch break uh, use that as an opportunity to explore some of the food outlets on campus. So the, the two major uh, student food outlets are Manning and Wentworth. Manning is across the footbridge here and that's on three levels and there's a whole variety of food you can buy there. And the other major centre is Wentworth which is a, a further walk and I, I won't give you directions because you'll have a map and you can find that. But that uh, in the Wentworth in the Wentworth building, there's also a chemist, a bank, 
a news agency, a dentist, the medical centre. So that's the hub of the uh, student services areas that you may need to, to access. Um, I put together for you a kudos bag, and the blue bag in that was just something that was given to our undergraduate students when they um, started this year. So just some, um, some souvenir for you to take back uh, for your time at the university. Also in that bag, there was a campus map, which is a little fold-out thing. Okay, so that's your, that's the current map of the University of Sydney, and that also lists um, all the services, the food outlets, the news agencies, anything that you might need to, to access while you're here. It's quite a large campus, so, um, but just remember if you get lost in your travels to ask anyone on campus to direct you back to the education building. Um, also in that bag was one sheet of useful information and I, when we were putting together, when we were thinking about what you might need while you were here, my first thought was well, everyone's going to need internet access. So that, they're the login details which is also on that piece of paper. Um, it's not, the whole university is not, um, not wireless, it's only certain pockets. So this building is one of them. Um, I, I might bring some maps later on that shows which areas of the university are, uh, you'll be able to log in, but it's, it's not um, over the whole campus. There's also a guide to Sydney in that little bag, and this is the best sort of um, overview that you can get of Sydney. At the front there is a very good map of the CBD area, and it, it tells you all of the things that are sort of happening at the moment and where you can go and what to do. Um, Who's been to Sydney before? Okay, not, not, okay. All right, well, um, apart from the weather, which is not very pleasant today, um, you, we had a lovely week last week, so either you must have brought the rain with you, I don't know where you've come from, but um, there's, um, as Ivan said, there's down at Darling Harbour, which is not far from here, you could actually walk it if you're feeling energetic, is one of the five um, accredited uh, Soccer World Cup sites. So there's huge screens um, down there, there's 20,000 people every night watching the game. You can imagine what the atmosphere is like. If you're going to go, go early because they've been having to close the gates when they reach crowd capacity. So I think Australia is playing next on I'm not a soccer fan, so I think Australia's playing on Thursday morning. So if nobody turns up on Friday, you know that's why. Because <laughs> everybody's been at the match and, and having a good time. Um, the, just uh, quickly going through the program, you've got the careers forum tonight. There's a, a barbecue which the um, ASO chapter here in Sydney Uni, Uni is organising tomorrow evening. And that will be on the roof of the physics building. So as Ivan said, it will be your opportunity to have the Australian barbecue, and I think Felix is actually planning to cook up some roux. So <laughs> try it. It's um, if you you know, it's a. I wouldn't, but <laughs> when I see the little cute pictures up there, but um, so yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a meat barbecue. Do we have any vegetarians? Okay, I'll make sure that you're catered for as well, other than just um, a, a meat thing. Um, Wednesday afternoon is a free session. I think you're going to finish here about one o'clock, and that's the one sort of free slot in the program. So there's some suggested ideas there of what you can do. I think over the next couple of days you might get a feel of how you want to use that time slot. But certainly if you need any help or advice or information, come and see me. Um, my suggestion would be to hop on a bus and go down to what we call the Rocks, which is the birthplace of, of Sydney, and, and there you'll find the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, the Botanical Gardens, the um, historical and cultural sites, and you could spend hours, and you can catch a ferry to Manly or whatever. Um, there are other places to go um, that are you know, equally popular with tourists, such as Bondi Beach or um, shopping, whoever likes shopping or whatever. 
And again, there's that site down in Darling Harbour where the soccer uh, is being broadcast. Um, then on, we, we'll have the poster session on Friday night and that will be over in um, the physics building and that will be a pizza and beer affair, okay? Um, I don't know if I've got anything else to say, but um, certainly I'll be around all week, so if you need to, to find, a, find something or a service, somebody already asked me this morning where a camera shop is, so please, um, you know, feel welcome to come in and see me and ask for any assistance that you might require. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to go out and plunge the coffee now. Um, so thank you and I hope you enjoy your week here at the University of Sydney. Yeah.